crisp as red. A S M details and we can get started. I see you haven't been for a while. That's all right. Lots of reading to come to. Um, you don't have any books outstanding. Good. And we don't seem to have your postcode. Could you give that to me? Okay. thing your date of birth okay. um, we changed our system you see so some of the information wasn't transferred over properly and, uh, seeing as you haven't been for a while we're just seeing this little your history though so I know what it is you've been reading taking out are you still into the same kind of books or are you looking for something different ah, okay okay um, I have a lot of self-help books here so you're in the right place I also have some cooking Don't I show them all to you? And you can uh, decide from there. Okay. And, uh, and again. Lovely. Okay. There's your card. Just write down. did you say? Let me show you these first. Personal favourites of mine. Um, these were very kindly donated to us actually. So they're very special. They've not been with us for very long. I'll show you this one. Now this is called Feeding Your Skin. Totally natural, chemical free 
beauty for healthy vital skin. It's by Carla Oates and inside there's a wealth of information and um, perfect for everyone I'd say. As an example, um, here they have fresh milk and cream cleansers. In particular, there's a lavender buttermilk cleanser and the recipe is here. So basically, this book is full of recipes for you to make your own skin care. Um, we have face masks, Treatments, body scrub. I've actually made a few myself and uh, they're really good. I'm trying to find one that I found particularly good. There's hand scrubs there. Okay. So there's um, hand moisturizers and masks. Patchouli in wintertime hand oil. That would be olive oil, avocado oil, patchouli essential oil, and rose essential oil, and two drops of benzoin essential oil. It says for winter, but um, I think all year round we should be looking after our hands. So that's a possibility. Um, this book is for anyone who wants to nurture their skin and body kindly and safely. So um, this one here. along the same lines. As an example. Okay. So this here is called the Green Beauty Bible and it says beauty that's good for you and good for the planet. From mascara to miracle creams, sun care to shampoo, everything you need to know about the confusing world of natural beauty. And it can be quite confusing, can't it? So um, that's very, very useful. Lots of very good information in there. Okay. So there we are. That's for the skin care. Um, okay. So, there are a few books over here I'd like to show you. Um, okay. Right. So, these books are always on my desk because they don't make it back to the shelves. They're so popular. So let me show them to you before someone else comes and takes them away. Okay. Um, the first is called The Road Less Travelled. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about this in a moment. We have Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and in fact two more books by Eckhart we have Practicing the Power of Now and his second book I believe which is called A New Earth I haven't got around to reading this 
this one yet, but I definitely will because um, The Power of No is just such a wonderful book. We have two um, oldies but goodies here to show you. Um, this one here is Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. You might have heard of that one. It's been around for a while. And um, this one here is called The Celestine Prophecy. The road less travelled. Okay. Confronting and solving problems is a painful process which most of us attempt to avoid, and the very avoidance results in greater pain and an inability to grow both mentally and spiritually. Drawing heavily on his own professional experience, Dr. M. Scott Peck suggests ways in which facing our difficulties and suffering through the changes can enable us to reach a higher level of self-understanding. He discusses the nature of loving relationships, how to recognise true compatibility, how to distinguish dependency from love, and how to become one's own person, and how to be a more sensitive parent. This is one of my favourites. Okay. There's one part in the any of these books then this has to be one of them. Now there's a whole chapter here all about love. I'm going to read a very small part of it um, but I can tell you love defined, which kind of lays out um, everything the writer feels about love. And then it's broken down into sections. So we have a section on falling in love, inverted commas. Romantic love. More about ego boundaries. Dependency. And get thesis without love. A section about self sacrifice, which is very interesting. And then here, this is the section I'm going to show you, and it's titled. 
Love is not a feeling. I have said that love is an action, an activity. This leads to the final major misconception of love, which needs to be addressed. Love is not a feeling. Many, many people possessing a feeling of love and even acting in response to that feeling act in all manner of unloving and destructive ways. On the other hand, a genuinely loving individual will often take loving and constructive action towards a person he or she consciously dislikes actually feeling no love towards the person at the same at the time and perhaps even finding the person repugnant in some way. The feeling of love is the emotion that accompanies the experience of connecting. Connecting, it will be remembered and that was mentioned earlier. Connecting it will be remembered is the process by which an object becomes important to us. Once connected, the object, commonly referred to as a love object, is invested with our energy, as if it were a part of ourselves. And this relationship between us and the invested object is called Thesis. So you can see where this section is going and um, how the book is written from that. But um, it really is very, very interesting and certainly for people who may not have been taught certain things in their upbringing, um, I would definitely recommend reading this. It um, was certainly an eye-opener for me in my early twenties. So that's The Road Less Travelled by M. Scott Beck, the 10 million copy seller. I haven't seen it around too much lately, um, but um, I do know a lot of people that have read this too. Here we have the power of now, and this is very, very important, I feel. Um, and I, I can think of a few people who need to read this. Um, you may enjoy it. I don't know if you've even read it before, have you? Okay. Um, so, the power of now can transform your thinking. The result? More joy right now. It's all about being present, and the writer Eckhart Tolle is a very, very inspiring person. Um, excellent to listen to if you ever get an opportunity to um, go and see him speaking, go and listen to him, or be in his presence. It's a wonderful thing. Um, you can even actually listen to him speaking on YouTube, and um, I believe. Spotify and it's worth having a look, Eckhart Tolle. And this is his um, first book called The Power of Now. We've had quite a lot of copies of this book in and um, yes, this is uh, one of the latest editions of that. Okay. Um, the Power of Now we learn that we can find our way out of psychological pain. Authentic human power is found by surrendering to the now, the silence and the space all around us. It's one of the keys to entering inner peace. It's very important to spend as much time as you're able day in peace, just quiet, listen to yourself, listen
listen to the silence around you and to be comfortable with yourself. That's a really interesting book as well, if you uh, would like to take that away and give it a go. It's been around for a long time, uh, but um, it's a good read. A lot of enlightening things in there as well. Okay, so I've gone through the self-help kind of section I have here. There are others back there, but those are the ones I have to hand. You're very welcome to take a look around as well. Whenever, if I just show you these, and you can take it from there. Okay? Um, so, I have some books on Reiki and crystals, um, aromatherapy there. And cooking. Um, there's a really sweet book. I don't know if you would like to look at anything for children. Okay, I'll show you anyway. Let's see. show you but just while we're on the subject of children's books this is also by Eckhart Tolle he teamed up with Robert Friedman and wrote a book for children it's called Milton's Secret I love it so much and um, it's just teaching children how to be present and not worry about the future or yesterday it's really nice and actually um, it's being made into a film at the moment so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I think maybe once so far. This is called Unstoppable Me. Ten ways to soar through life. It's by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer with Christina Tracy. And very, very sweet. Let me show you. Let's have a look at the back. Okay, I'll read this little bit here. This is uh, recommended for ages 4 to 10. Um, but to be honest with you, I know children who are older than 10 that would still get quite a lot out of this, you know. Um, even some adults, actually. <laughs> Following the footsteps of Dr. Wayne Dyer's first children's book, the New York Times bestseller, Incredible You, this work goes a step further toward expressing Wayne's positive message for children. He teaches children to hold on to the no-limit thinking he believes they were born with, rather than just trying to fit in. Isn't that wonderful? There are lots of lessons we have to learn through action as we grow up. Learning the tools. 
animals along the way in order to cope with certain life situations. It makes a real difference. from your mistakes and you'll get stronger as you grow. Believe you'll succeed and then make it so. If you value yourself and all that you are, you'll be unstoppable. The next superstar. Got all my lines today. Some kids laughed and I wanted to hide, but I still believe I'm a star inside. So tonight, when I'm standing in that brilliant spotlight, no matter what happens, I'll be alright. It's a really lovely book. You have a choice. Farewell to worry. Peace begins with you. That's true. You may even want to read that for yourself. This is a really good book. I actually read this um, this Easter and it uh, was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. It's based in Norfolk, which is um, a county in England. The seaside towns there are just lovely. Um, but it's quite special seeing as it's based in Norfolk. There's another book, a sequel to this, which is Summertime, which um, I'm in the middle of now. Um, when Venetia summers his husband runs off with his masseuse, the bohemian, bohemian idyll she had strived to create for her young family suddenly loses some of its rosy hue. From her tumble-down cottage in Norfolk, she struggles to keep up with the chaos caused by her two boys, her splendid baby daughter, and the hordes of animals, relatives and would-be artists that live in her home. From juggling errant cockerels, jam-making frenzies, and war hammers, to unexpected romance, Bloody Marys and forays into fashion design. Hen's dancing is like a rural Bridget Jones's diary, and it charts a year in Venetia's madcap household. show you um, one of the cooking books I have and then I've basically gone through all of the different books I have to hand here. Okay. That's one there. Okay, this
this here is a very popular book. Um, it's from Riverford, and Riverford are a very popular company. They um, have farms, and they are organic farmers. They grow fruit and vegetables, and deliver to people's doors. So. Um, they're doing a very, very good service. This is the official book for Riverford. I believe they've also started um, a YouTube channel with videos on how to prepare the vegetables that they grow. That's, that's a really good thing to know. On that myself. So his name is Guy. He is the um, founder of Riverford. And then there's some of his co workers there. Riverford Farm Cookbook Tales from the Fields Recipes from the Kitchen And uh, one of their mottos Their company slogans, if you will Is um, Live Life on the Veg Which I think is lovely So, the contents are all here laid out very, very easy to navigate around this book. Okay. This is the um, preface here. Decades before any journalist was interested and before there was even an accepted definition of what they were doing, a small band of farmers and gardeners laid the foundations of organic farming as we know it today. They were much derided for their rejection of chemical farming and for the extreme and unscientific nature of their beliefs. They were freaks on the fringe, pursuing their enthusiasms in isolation down muddy tracks while the rest of farming swept past in the opposite direction. And um, likewise in the kitchen, supermarkets began to peddle exotic, convenient and increasingly processed food, and a generation turned its back on local ingredients and culinary traditions. While cooking fresh local ingredients from scratch fell from fashion, a band of strong-minded cooks working in isolation of their own kitchens continued to value what the land around them could produce in season. Their work was helped to keep some semblance of culinary tradition alive to be picked up by today's generation. A little more there as well. And um, here we have information about Riverford, which is good. And then lots of sections on how to prepare vegetables, how to store. And then we come into the recipes here. So there are lots and lots of recipes in this book. As you can see, it's very big. Let's have a mixture of pictures. Um, some nice, nice Brussels there. Um, but not too many pictures because then, of course, it makes room for more recipes. Information there on all of the different vegetables. So, if you were to order from Riverford and you received something in your box that you're not um, familiar with, then
then the information is in here, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So you've seen everything, and um, are there any books that took your fancy today? Okay. Right. So why don't I get those together for you? And I can be popping those into the system. Do you want to have a look around the rest of the library today? Okay. Okay. Well, maybe if you have a little potter about while I process these books for you. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good look around? Right? See anything you're interested in? Uh, okay. Anything in particular? Um, Alright. And we didn't have it. Okay. Um, what's it called again? Okay, let me pop these down. So if I can see if we've got it. Um, if it's not on the shelves, then I can at least find out if we do have it and uh, when it will be back in. Okay, and then maybe you could take these books and uh, get started on reading those. And we can send you an email when it comes back. Yeah, okay. That usually works quite well. Okay. Bye.
you, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, yes, we do have it. We have just one copy, though, so um, it's out at the moment. back in, um, well it's due back in seven days. So, I'll put a note on the record there. Okay. And do we have your email? I think it was on there. Okay, yeah, just give it to me, just in case. receive an email then and um, you could pop in for it. If you can't get in straight away, just reply to the email and we'll hold it for you. Um, I think we hold it for 48 hours. Um, so if you can get in before that time, that would be fantastic. Okay. Right, so these are the books. You've got one, two, three, four here. Okay. Right, so there's your card. And uh, do you have a bag for these books? Okay. Right, I'll put them in there for you. Okay. So, it's been great to see you. I've enjoyed showing you all the books. Uh, we're into quite similar things, so um, I really enjoyed showing you some of my favourites there. Okay. You enjoy reading the books you have, and um, hopefully you can get into those and we can entice you to come back on a regular basis from now on. It's kind of, um, once you get out of the habit of reading, it's easy to stop, really, so um, it's a bit like exercise. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, you take care and um, enjoy yourself, as I said, and uh, I'll see you again soon. I'm here full time, so I'll be here when you, when you return. Okay, alright, lovely to see you.